Welcome back to the VPUB. I hope you had a great summer. This is the first time I'm coming to you in 1080p. Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everybody. Fantastic to see you all. Fantastic to be back again after a really, really nice summer, despite everything, of course. This, of course, is the first time um, I'll be coming to you in this environment, in this uh, new studio. I'm not calling it my office anymore. I'm actually going to just call it a studio. I've spent a lot of time kind of fixing it and laying it out so it's got a bit more space, a bit more fit for purpose. I'm a bit out of sorts tonight. Things are in a different place than they normally are. And sure, I'll be a wee bit rusty. So the chances are there's going to be a few mistakes tonight. So it's kind of just an ease myself back into it again. Um, and hopefully quite a nice but still quite interesting theme that we're covering tonight as well. That idea that, you know, you're trying to encourage somebody into whiskey and you're going to recommend a, a small collection for them that they can put together for not too much money. Um, maybe you're speaking to your former self when you were still uh, in your early days in whiskey, or maybe you're speaking to a friend that you're just trying to encourage in. You need to give a nice selection, a nice representation of the range of whiskey flavours, but you need to keep the price neat. I'm trying to put together six bottles for around £200. If I go for a nice presentation, natural presentation, as close to the ABCDs as I can, I'll try and keep it within £250 and allow up to that level. That's the theme tonight. We'll talk about it throughout the show. It'll give us a chance to talk about lots of whiskies and touch on some whiskies that we're very, very familiar with and we enjoy and we like to evangelise and enthuse about, but also kind of maybe pull out a few nice whiskies that we might not have ever tried or touched or considered before. That's the idea anyway. I'm going to jump in and hang out with you guys in the chat, in the lounge, uh, you beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies for a little while. Um, and see how you are all doing. Let's pull up the chat and see who we have this evening. Oh, wow, there's a lot of orange. I hope you can see and hear me okay. I'm sure somebody would have told me if the audio and the video uh, was a problem. It should be fine. I've tested it enough. Um, wonderful to see you all. Paul Gibbs, I'm looking at you, my friend. Good to see you. Um, Nice to welcome you back in to the brand new VPUB, my friend. Uh, Helen's is here, Seriously Serious, Gregor McQuee, uh, Jason at Malt Review, Graham Fraser, Jimmy Jazz, Nathan DeKinga, Multimission, um, fantastic. Um, all good to see you in. Uh, Des is in, good to have you, Des. Rico Denert, Scott Pelton, Billy Saunders. Uh, Billy, I need to reach out with to you on a, a separate subject altogether. I, got, I picked up a message from you in an area of Facebook that I don't even check and I don't get any notifications from that so sometimes people try and reach out to me on Facebook and there's a message that just doesn't get replied I picked up that there's a message in there from you buddy I hope it's covered and I hope we've spoken since then it goes away back and um, nice to have you Billy uh, I've had a super chat in from uh it's just dropped in from my friend Zach over in Texas welcome back this just feels like the right place to be in a Thursday it's made all the better by you hanging out with me Zach thank you very much for the for the super chat I'd also like to thank Graham Horner who welcomed me back with a super chat before the pub doors were even open tonight so Graham and Zach thank you so much my friends it's nice to have you and all of you back again Slanjava welcome everyone I am sipping tonight one of the most popular uh, bottles. Uh, not just, this is obviously a favourite of mine. I've talked about this bottle a lot and we'll get to it at some point this evening. Uh, but I went into Patreon to talk about this subject as well and I, I, I got a lot of um, feedback from those guys. And this is a remarkably popular bottle of whiskey. And it does make an appearance um, here and there throughout the Aquavite channel. It does appear occasionally on the VPUB. But sometimes it just slips past a lot of people's attention. I think it's so familiar that we sometimes forget about it. Um, but that's what I'm starting tonight with as well. 46% and it's delicious. I won't spoil it just now. I'll get to that. 
Whiskey Novice Jay Ingram was in. Please go and check out Whiskey Novice's channel. I live for the notifications now coming from Jim every week because the intros to his videos are always interesting and original and sometimes really, really funny. The one that came out this week when he's talking about whiskey glasses, I spat out my tea. I thought it was wonderful. I encourage you to go and pick up his review of Old Pulteney 12. And if you kind of uh, are in for a, a, an even bigger laugh, uh, go back and watch his video on uh, Coke and 12 as well. Hilarious. Uh, great stuff, Jim. Keep bringing it, buddy. It's really original and fun to watch. Arnie Tiger is here. Good to see you, Arnie, my friend. Uh, Whiskey Stream 5, that's Tony. Good to have you. Jean de la Cuisine, my friend, I've just been speaking to you separately. Good to have you in. Uh, oh, my goodness, the chat is moving quickly. Matt Bishop is here. Alan McLaughlin, Tony Evans, finally done. David Owen, Greg's Whiskey Guide, Everwind. Fair winds, everyone. I hope you're doing very well. Alistair Gray up north of Scotland. I hope you're okay. Alistair Mark, Mark, Marcus Kreitner. I uh, hope you're next to Christina, as always, Marcus. Uh, Reb Mordecai is here. Good to have you, Reb. Fantastic to see you, my friend. Always nice to see you. Orange Wool. Um, Simon Ray. Jason Bennett. So, so, so many of you in. 237 of you. And uh, we've only uh, just got things started again. I'm really excited about this year um how we can kind of develop the vpub and things it's a weekly thing now kind of it's one of the it's one of the positives let's say if you want to look at it that way that we take out of um the lockdown thing i realized that um if i put my head in the right space i could bring the content out but back in june lockdown i was bringing it out twice a week so it should be uh, no problem for me to do it weekly. What I don't want to do is kind of have a, a kind of guest structure every week. I think it's nice to do that alternate weeks or maybe once a month or something, have a nice guest in. But the guests on the show will always be guests that are here because they've got some value to add, you know, something that the audience, something that you guys, the community really wants to hear about or engage with. Um, and I think that... Uh, I think we've we've been able to do that with the guests so far. Um, you know, rather than kind of just folk coming on, I, would, I think it'd be easy to get people coming on to talk about their latest products and latest releases and things. But I think we're pretty good at engaging with that anyway. We're at the jaggy end of the spectrum. We're enthusiasts. We tend to know, although I'm a wee bit out of touch right now, we tend to know what's coming out most of the time. Um, we keep up to speed with all of that on our social feeds and everything. So I think it would be nice to bring guests that have fun to share, anecdotes, stories, concepts, behind scenes, uh, insights, that kind of thing. Um, but we'll develop it. I'm still very, very keen uh, to hear you guys, your ideas of subjects and topics that you would like to see covered in the VPUB, and uh, I'll continue to add them to my list, and uh, we can kind of develop things from there. The topic tonight is one that's been on my list for a long, long time. Um, if you go back to 2016, a friend of mine, Roberto Malt Mafioso, he lives very close here. We was just getting into whiskey and we started to talk about the kind of whiskey that he should maybe be buying and having at home, but he wasn't sure what he liked at that time. He wasn't sure what he didn't like and it was kind of all over the place for him. And it would have been nice for him to have just a nice contrast filled selection there, but not too expensive. I remember him giving me the ballpark of about £30 a bottle, so we decided that it might be possible to put together six bottles for £200 that he could have, and then he would have whiskies at home to explore, much in the same way that he was exploring when he came around here to hang out with myself and the Whiskey Rev and explore whatever we had. Since 2016, things have changed. It's changed because the range of whiskies that I put together for him back then, we we were touching on, you know, Aberla or Abuna was available for 45, 48 pounds back then. That's not available for that kind of price anymore. It's much more expensive. There were fairly inexpensive bar, bar blares. There were there were uh, other whiskies available in 2016 that have been replaced or have just been discontinued. And also, my preferences have changed and I've become a bit more fussy and I tend to go after more naturally presented things now. And it, when I looked at the original six that I'd recommended, I realized that there was maybe only one or two. The one I'm drinking tonight actually is on the list. Uh, there was only one or two that would survive to today. And I thought that would be a good topic because if I just pick up from where I left off, it, Towards the end, before the summer break, I started to really just 
whinge and whinge about prices and whiskey a wee bit too much, I felt. And that's fine. I think we have to do that. I think we have to declare when we're a wee bit annoyed about price hikes. But we have to always give things context. Um, and we have to understand price versus value because they're two very, very different things. Um, and rather than me just getting on and talking about how I, I can't, I can't talk about this anymore because the price has gone up and I can't do this. I can't price, price, price. It'd be nice if we could use these little kind of um, tools, these little kind of projects or mechanisms to, to really think about price. Because if we're trying to put six bottles together for less than 250 pounds, 250 euros, less than $300, whatever it may be, you really have to think about price. And it automatically gets you thinking about comparing different bottles and what value they give you. What it also does is make you realize that despite the price increases happening in whiskey, believe me, as drinkers and enthusiasts, there is still a bunch of stuff out there. Before we even, not even having to touch the independents or the single casks and, and things, I'm just speaking about with in-core range, widely available, globally distributed whiskies for decent prices, decent flavor, decent presentation. There is still a lot of it out there. The prices are creeping up, but there are still some good value whiskies. And I think I'm hoping that some uh, whiskies are going to pop up for you tonight that's going to make you realize that that's the case. Kevin Grant and Whiskey, get my friend Kevin as well. He's, uh, he's, I hope he's going to keep up his YouTube thing. He's uh, stepping into a new career now. He's been uh, successful in uh, applying to a new career and he's starting that in September, but we'll wait and see if he's got any time for whiskey going forward. He's saying, sorry, I'm late, folks. Glad to see everyone back. Hope you're well, Aquaviti. You know I'm well, buddy. Saw you a couple of days ago and I know that you're well too. I'm excited for you, Kevin. Good to have you in. The Doc McCallum Fenerera is here saying, is the compass straight? The camera might make it look awkward. Can we just spend a minute talking about this? The reason that I've completely changed the studio around, or let's say the motivation to do it, it was needing done anyway, was because Mark Gons has sent me this compass. Let me pull up the camera so I can see it a wee bit better. Uh, this is a uh, this is carved out of solid wood. It's very very heavy to give you an idea of scale. Yeah, it does look like it's slanted a wee bit, but that's aspect. Um, uh, there's no it, you ha it can only hang straight because it's it's got a little mount on the back. To give you an idea of scale, you know, it's probably twice the size of a whiskey bottle. So you'd have to put two whiskey bottles on top of each other to get the diameter, more or less. Um, and it's very, very heavy. I've had to put a wall anchor in, in there. I'm kind of nervous that somebody closes a door in the house a bit too hard and the thing's going to just fall off. And I guarantee you, if that does happen one day, it'll happen when I'm on a live stream. Um, if you've been here long enough, you'll know that things do tend to happen. Um, however, I love this thing. I think it's... a uh, I think it's really, really nice. Um, uh, the way that the, the studio or the backdrop used to be set up for the VPUB, um, it wouldn't have worked. So I changed things around to give it pride of place. I think it's looking uh, really quite nice up there to the point that I've just realized I don't even have uh, the wee uh, Barfly logo up there. Um, <laughs> there we go. The Barfly is back. Um, but I think it's looking fantastic and uh, I'm really pleased um, with uh, the new space and things I've got to work in. It's just a, a nicer place to be. Over my shoulder here, I've got all the kind of gift bottles and things from the community, some other nice special bottles that I've got. That uh, uh, The bottles I keep in here are ones probably that I'm going to keep sealed for a while, maybe bottles that's looking for that moment. And so it's kind of fine for them to be in a kind of ornamental role, let's say. Um, uh, really, really chuffed with uh, just having a place, honestly, that that feels a bit more like it's set up for this rather than what it used to be um, before May. It used to have to function as my office and my workspace as well, but it's been dialed back a wee bit in that area and it's all the better for it. Um, we're coming at you at 1080p as well. There's been a bump in, in audio quality. There's, you should see a, a small bump in video quality as well to 1080p. I don't really see it here. I'm a wee bit nervous about how I'm going out there at, at 1080p, but uh, we'll go with it. Um, hopefully, um, things, the quality will be a wee bit better generally. So have we think about what your bottles are 
I'll pull up the chat again and uh, share with us what your bottle recommendations would be. I've got two guests waiting in the background for a quick game of Is It A Space Side? Start as you mean to go on. And uh, they'll be trying to win one of these sniper coins. I've been sending these out over the summer. So if you've won a sniper coin, uh, Alistair Gray and I, were, we were keeping a spreadsheet together to try and track everybody that's won a sniper coin. Um, so it doesn't matter if you've won it by being live on the show to play the game or if you've won it through being the first in the lounge in the chat to guess what the bottle in question is, you would win yourself one of these uh, acrylic glass toppers. They just sit atop the glass like that. They keep the aromas and the smells in and they keep the dust and the bugs out. Um, this is a, a fine dram uh, to do that with as well. So uh, we'll play a wee game of, is it a space side? and hopefully uh, have a bit of fun with that. I've got uh, two guys that have never been on before waiting in the wings to play a wee game of that. Steve A saying he got his yesterday. Wow, Steve, that's taken a long time to go over to you, but I'm glad you've, they finally arrived and you've got them. I hope you like them. Luna Aaron is here saying, Coquerin is 12 and Spring Bank 10. I'm quite easy to read, Luna, I think. But funnily enough, neither of those are in the glass here right now. Um... Scogsmard is here saying, how was your summer? It was really good. We didn't get away this year. We didn't get a sunny holiday. We chose to stay, like so many people, we chose to stay here locally. I see a couple of super chats come in and I don't want to miss those. Eric has bought me a chat. You star, Eric, and welcome back inside Patreon as well, my friend. It's nice to have you there. He's saying, when I was a, a wee lad, candy bars were 10 cents and a matinee movie was a dollar. <laughs> I know it's, it's too easy to think about, you know, the days, isn't it? Um, whiskey was probably cheaper too. There are sometimes price lists of whiskey that come come up. They appear from the nineties and things because back then they used to be printed. They weren't online, and uh, you sometimes see a little scan or a photograph of whiskey price lists from back in the day. Port Ellen's for seventy pounds and Brora's for seventy five. Things like that. It's incredible to think. Um, but you know, we we can't we can't just keep looking backwards. Uh, Whiskey Malt Content is in. Good to have you back, Roy. Slanchy, my friend. Vlad. Vlad, it's wonderful to have you as well. Thank you very much for your dram. And I've also got a dram in from Oops. Just as the chat, it always seems to jump as I touch it. Gary Cobb has joined. He's saying, well, uh, he's joined the Aqua Vitae Barflies. Thank you. It's nice to welcome you in, my friend. But who is the other super chat from? Please don't let me miss it. Uh, Prime Whiskey, thank you so much for your dram. Uh, bought me a dram as well, no comment there, but thank you, my friend. Uh, wonderful. I'll raise a wee glass to you all in a second. But if I'm losing either my sight or a chunk of the chat. No, I've got it. It's Benny Fries, it looks like. Benny, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing your name correctly. Fries, he says, you look better than ever, Roy. <laughs> yeah, you can stay, you can come back again. <laughs> hope you enjoyed your vacation. Welcome back. I did, Benny. I had a fantastic time. It was very relaxing. I did get to spend a week with the family uh, up north in the Speyside region with the Whiskey Rev and his family. And just having that amount of green around you, that amount of water, um, we did have a wee bit of whiskey around us, but we didn't visit any whiskey destinations. It was just a family holiday, but it was a super relaxing uh, and a fantastic uh, place uh, to reset. It was wonderful. Simon Ray's has thrown in some suggestions. Deanston 12, yep. Glen Allachy 12, yep. Aaron 10, yep. Tobermory 12, yep. Tobermory 12. Nice one, Simon. Not a lot of people would think about it. Uh, Springbank 12, I, I guess you're talking about the cast strength there. Mm. Maybe. It's certainly good value. Uh, Brook Laddie, classic Laddie, 50% ABV. So spring back 12 and Brook Laddie, you would have to then take them down the road of exploring with water, which might be a good thing. Jimmy Legg is here. Good, wonderful to see you, Blair. He's saying those yellow glasses behind you look familiar. Uh, those glasses, those yellow glasses up here that's on the, the Bart hat, the Scotch Test Dummies hat under the Scott hat, which is the Scotch Test Dummies uh, trucker hat cap. And on top of the Ralphie jacket, these are actually Whiskey Tribe glasses. So yes, they would look familiar to you, Jimmy. Um, wonderful to have you in, my friend. Good to have you back. Uh, glad to have you, Roy. The V-Pub looks absolutely stellar, says... Uh, oh, I never... I can never say Southern or SoCal. 
Southern South California dram tram. Anyway, I'm sure that's Matt. I'm sure that's my friend Matt. Could be Caesar as well. Wonderful to have you seeing the, the public stellar. Glad you're, re you're recharged and ready to go. We've missed you. I'm no doubt a wee bit rusty, Matt, but I've certainly enjoyed the time away. My cousin Moira Morrison is here saying, Hi Roy, your studio looks amazing. I'll give you a wee tour tomorrow night. Bring a curry, Moira, please. Good to have you in. Jimmy Jazz is here as well. Wonderful to have you, Jimmy, and Joe Prestera. First time seeing the new layout. Looks great. Honestly, Joe, it's the first time for everybody. My idea was to have the summer speakeasy for patrons on Sunday before we went live, uh, but we had other family plans and arrangements come in on a Sunday. I just, we couldn't do it. Um, so the speakeasy for patrons is going out on Sunday coming. Uh, and so that's, I'm just going to try a Zoom meeting and we'll try doing the breakout rooms and things like that. But, uh, that was going to be the, the unveiling. But I decided that the best thing to do is just the same thing I've always done as soon as I have a change around or a wee upgrade is just go live with it after the summer break. And uh, uh, it's feeling good. I'm glad that you like it as well. Thanks, Joe. Thanks so much. The Whiskey Whistle Mark is in as well saying hi, Roy. And he's given me wee glass emojis. Mark, I hope you're doing very, very well. It's wonderful to have you in, my friend. I hope you're keeping things active and busy. Um, well, in life generally, but on the channel as well, my friend. That's Whiskey Whistle from Canada, from uh, Winnipeg, I think Mark's from. Uh, McAllen Rare has thrown in some suggestions. Aaron 10, absolutely. That's, that's two for that. Glenn Farkless, 15. Great shout. It's difficult to get a good value sherry, uh, or let's say not only just sherry influence or sherry cask, but really strong sherry flavours as well. Um, Glenn Farkless, 15 is a good shout. The Ardbeg Wee Beastie, he's suggesting. The five-year-old. It's an interesting one, um, definitely interesting. Talisker Distillers Edition, uh, good one. Uh, Springbank 12 cast strength, again going for high ABV there. And Bladnick 10, £234. He's even done, I bet you that's based on German prices. So you can probably go about 80% uh, of the prices that we'd be paying here in the UK is a rough rule of thumb. Uh, but that's a good shout. The Bladnick's an interesting one as well because... I think it's a bizarre ABV. It's like 47, 48% or something. Um, I think it's been created by uh, Ian McMillan as well. And, uh, you know, I, I'm keeping my eye on Bladnick. I think it's a wee bit pricey, honestly, for a 10-year-old. But if the qualities there were happy to embrace it, we're happy to pay a wee bit more um, if the qualities there pay less attention to the age and, and just really enjoy the whiskey. Um I have enjoyed it, but I've also had a couple of not so great experiences paying a wee bit over the odds for non-age statement from Bladnock. So for me, it's a try before a buy. I have had a dram of the Bladnock 10. I did enjoy it. I'm sure you'll see a bottle of Bladnock 10 appearing on the VPUB, on a video or a recycled review or something in the future. I think it is a reasonable shout. Uh, uh, Tam 3 me. Tam 3 me, I, I don't know if that if I'm saying that right, if it looks like a new name, my friend, but he's in Aquavite watching a 40-inch monitor in North Carolina, USA. It looks and sounds great. Fantastic. I'm glad that you're noticing the bump. Mashburn is saying, 1080p, if I go full screen, I can tell if you've had a close shave. That's what I'm uncomfortable about. That's why I don't like so much. I'll have to go a wee bit extra on the personal grooming. Anyway, less about that. Let me uh, reach out to my guests tonight. Let's have a wee game of Is It a Space Side. Let's see just how rusty I am. Let's have uh, people playing for these exclusive sniper coins. You can't buy these sniper coins. Uh, these are, can only be one playing the game. You can play in the lounge. If you're the first to guess in the lounge, whether it's before or after us that are playing it live, um, you win yourself a sniper coin. Uh, my moderators, uh, Gregor, McAllen, Final Rear the Doc, Alistair Gray, if he's in, I haven't seen him tonight, uh, we'll be watching uh, along with Steve A and uh, the other uh, admins uh, to see who gets it first. Uh, Emery McGill is saying, I'd recommend Craig Elhi 13 is a great starter whiskey for someone. I think Craig Elhi 13 is a wonderful whiskey. I think it's potentially a wee bit subtle, but it's nevertheless a good shout. It's maybe for a space side region. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good whiskey, but I think Craig Elke 13 is, is about nuance and subtle complexity. I think it's about that texture. Um, it's a lovely, malty, oily texture. Um, 
but I think it's a good shout and certainly a good whiskey. Full flavour, not too alcoholic, and I have changed many minds about scotch with that dram. Emery, I'm sure you're doing a great job as well. It makes all the difference if you're taking the time to explain to people why that little tiny pour that they have in their glass is so, so special. Um, and people will start to taste past the alcohol, taste past that generic whiskey smell and taste that they get once you talk to them about potential things, other flavours, other aromas that they could they could discover in the glass. They will start to think a wee bit more and taste rather than drink. And that's what it's all about. That's why I pay so much attention, though, to keeping the ABV down, because the high ABV can often be a distraction with people that are just starting out. But think about yourself. Think about when you started out drinking whiskey as well. Yash Desai, that looks like a new name, my friend. He's saying Aquavita, the new layout looks great. I've been a lurker in the VPUB for a few months, but this is a good time to chime in and say it's good to have you back. It's good to have you chime in and it's good to have you chatting, Yash. Tell us where you are. And if you've got a drama in hand, tell us what it is. And the barflies will be happy to welcome you in. It's good to have you contributing to the chat. And thank you for the compliments about the new layout. The Chris, the whiskey bowman, is in. Same Klein Leash 14. Chris, I. Absolutely. Daniel Vermas has said it as well. Um, and he's saying Klein Leash 14 for is it a space side? Klein Leash 14 is what I have in the glass right now. And it does appear on my list. I've picked and I've committed to my list. And what I'm going to do is I'll share a spreadsheet with you that you can see not only my whiskies that I picked, but also my backup kind of list. Uh, ones that you know, if you talk to somebody and they really don't like peat, you know you're not going to get them touching smokier peaty whiskies. There's another wee list there that kind of moves away from my first pick of six and gives some backup options as well based on availability and things like that and, and avoiding peat. And I've also got a third option as well that manages to bring the six bottles together for a bargain price of £180. So... That link is in the description box underneath this video right now. Um, I'll drop it in the. I would drop it in the chat, but potentially uh, you, people will be dropping out. But you can uh, you can pull it up, and uh, you'll see exactly what I'm going to be talking about as I go through. But what you'll also see on that list is that you will see um, what the community have put together as well. Uh, I can't drop the link in there because of the size of that link. Okay, it's in the description box below, but you don't need to distract yourself with it just now. It's very much a verbal thing at the minute. Okay, let's get a wee game of Visit Speyside on the go. Let's bring in our guests. I'm going to reach uh, out to my friend uh, Sachin down in Kent in the southeast. Give me a thumbs up, Sachin, if you're good to come in. Yep. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the VPUB. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yourself? I'm very well. I'm very well. It's good to see you. Are you ready for a wee game of Is It a Space Side, Sachin? I've been waiting all day. Before we kick it off, give us a recommendation. If a friend came to you and said they would like one or two, maybe three bottles to start, to start themselves off, to sit at home and sip and compare and contrast, any ideas what you would recommend? I've got three. I've got three suggestions. So one would be for a bourbon, I would say Woodford Reserve because it's a wheated bourbon. It's not too, uh, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not too sharp. I like it. I drink. I was drinking it earlier just today. I like it. I'd also 40, say forty-five percent. I think that one it, is. It well. is forty-five percent, but it, I think it just gives it that more extra flavour. You know. Well, I think uh, it's all. It's always on a certainly in the UK. Uh, Sachin, as you and I know, it's always on a good deal in the supermarkets too. Absolutely, and it's very good price. I actually bought a bottle. Uh, this is a whole liter. I bought it for thirty pounds on Approved Foods. Uh, I got it from there for a, a liter for thirty pounds. It's a bargain. Literally. Excellent. Um, a good another, value. yeah, yeah, very good value. Um, I, I also would say Monkey Shoulder. I know it's a, I know it's a blend. It's not a. It's not, you know, an age-stated whiskey sure, with a sure. single grain, a single single malt, but it is. But I, I like, I like it. I think it's nice. And my third option for a little bit of peat, and only a little bit, would be Highland Park Twelve. Well, I think what you've done there with the monkey shoulder in Highland Park is you're keeping it nice and soft, forty percent ABV. Yeah. Um, 
so you know it's it's not going to scare them away um exactly. I, i've kind of lent a bit more to to kind of um almost like if i was kind of leading myself back in the early days i've gone higher on abv because i want the natural presentation i want the lack of chill filtration i want preferably to have no color in there an age statement if i can get it and a nice bottling strength of course but those are good ones yeah and i'll tell you why they're good ones the highland park is nice and soft it does introduce them to a nice little puff of smoke it the does. monkey shoulder when you talk about blended malt then you can start to talk to them about the difference between malt whiskey blended whiskey and then what sits in between you know blended malt yeah and i think it's good to get that concept across as well so that they start to feel comfortable talking about concepts like that as well so exactly you know, although, he's there, Sachin. although monkey shoulder is slightly higher in abv in the us which, I, which I yeah which i always find like you know they're, they're, they're cheating us a bit but you know <laughs> it's a legacy thing the 43 was like a, an export strength um yeah unfortunately the americans they get their lefroy i think even they get highland park i'm not sure that they're, they're Highland Park 12 at 43 as well. They get their Lefroy at 43. Um, yes, the, the Americans uh, do quite well at a lot of things. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, unfortunately yeah. for us. Anyway, buddy, do you have a bottle on hand or do you need me to have a bottle on hand? No, I have a bottle on hand. Yep. Excellent. So I'm asking you, okay? So for everybody, um, if you've never seen this before, I, I am I am now the one that's trying to guess the bottle that Sachin has on hand. And I've got 10 questions to guess uh, what the bottle is. And he is only allowed to answer yes or no. If I guess, I win. And if uh, I don't guess, Sachin wins. And he wins himself a sniper coin as well as the people, uh, whoever wins in the lounge as well. Let me pull up <clears> that <throat> chat as well so I can keep a wee eye on it as we play. Uh, there we go. I'll be able to see you, Sachin, and the chat at the same time. Yep. Uh, where have you gone? Too many windows open. All this real estate. I think I've got too much real estate, and so I'm not as organized as you should be. There you are. I've got you back. Um, okay, buddy. We're going to start this. I'll do the screen share to pull up our little countdown thing, and uh, we'll just start to, I'll start to ask. So good luck to me. Sachin, I'm of course going to just ask you outright, is it a space side? It isn't, no. It's not. Is it a Highland? It is. Okay, we're in the Highlands, fantastic. Does it have an age statement, Sachin? It does, yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I wonder if Daniel Vermas has won it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's not go there yet. Um, Okay, it's an age stated Highlands. If we consider the middle point being somewhere in the region of, let's say, Tomatin, just south of Inverness, is it north of Tomatin? Oh, um, I, I would say it's ever so slightly north of Tomatin. Okay, that's given me given me a lot more than <laughs> just a, a straight. Okay. Yeah. Is it owned by uh, one of the big four, that is Diageo, Edrington, Grants, and uh, Pernod Ricard? No. It's not? Oh, wow. Mm. So that has me wobbling. So it's not Diageo, it's not one of the big four, it's in the Highlands. Um, okay. It's got an age statement on it. Is it 43% ABV or lower? No. Oh. I'm struggling a wee bit here. You think you think it's it's a wee bit further north than Tomatin? Um when I say north, it might be north like like it it, it, it might be northeast or northwest. But it, do you see what I mean? Like if you if you drew a line, it might be slightly more north. On yes. A higher, yeah. But yeah. Yes. But, okay. but we're not talking hugely. Okay. Is it a Glen? It is a Glen. Is it owned by Brown Foreman? It is. 
Is it a Glendronic? Yes. <laughs> Is it Glendronic 12? It isn't, no. Okay, so this, if anybody watches there, this is kind of the Hurley, as we call it. It's my last, last chance. We always have this to try and... So it's a Glendronic. It's core range. It's got an age statement on it. So it could be the 15, it could be the 18, it could be the 21 Parliament, it could be the 8-year-old. Hmm. Glendronic 21. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe it. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, I swear, I make, it, I, make, <laughs> I make it look like that we've had some kind of discussion beforehand. Brilliant. That's because uh, I was just trying to second guess it there, I suppose, and it worked out. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, Luna Aaron is shouting, remember the ABV. She's absolutely right. So it's yeah, not, 58%. Yeah, yeah uh, ABV is uh, 43 on the 12, of course. Very mm -hmm. foolish. I gave away a couple ones there. That is literally snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, isn't it? Yeah, that was. <laughs> snatching, well done. Glendronic 21. A wonderful, sumptuous, very luxurious dram as well. I do enjoy it. Yet to open. Yet to open. Oh, have you tried it before? <laughs> I've never tried it. I'm gonna open it soon. It's uh it's a it's a it's a wonderful treat. A wonderful treat. Um and you can still pick it up at, at reasonable prices as well. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey Novice is saying, Well done, Daniel Gray is saying hey, that's how you snipe. <laughs> <laughs> and Lynn Aaron is saying such a lucky bee. <laughs> Jimmy Legg is saying web webcam was hacked ten minutes ago. <laughs> Killed the recent Roy Curls in the top corner in injury time, absolutely. Teddy KGB saying, not that rusty, I guess. I was very, very lucky there. Sachin, my friend, thank you. It's so nice to have you in. Are you staying till the quiz? I will stay, yes. Wonderful if you can join us for the quiz, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I may just send you a wee sniper coin anyway because I'm feeling a wee bit guilty about stealing it just for your participation, my friend. Thank, thank you, you so much, Sachin. Thank you. Oh, what about that? Nicked it. I absolutely nicked it. Let's see how we got on with our next participant. We're going to cross the Atlantic now to a friend of mine. I got to spend some time with this guy when he visited us in Scotland last year. Him and his wife, San, get married here last year. I'm going to ask Jonathan to give me a thumbs up if he's good to come in. Yes. Welcome, Jonathan Flowers. Welcome, my friend. You're a wee bit darker now. You must be losing the light where you are, but it doesn't matter. We don't need to see you as long as we can uh, hear you okay. How are you? No, the audio is gone, buddy. Are you muted? We're not there. Ah, there we go. We can hear you now. I was panicking there for a second. Good. How as are you long, doing? Like say, as long as we can hear you. Are you well, Jonathan? Welcome to the VPUB. I am well. It's good to be here. Fantastic. What did you think about that? My goodness. The you sniping the last one? Yes. Phenomenal. I was yeah. going for the 18. With all the craze, my mind is just on the... Glendronic 18, but you, uh, I'm impressed. I nicked it. No, it was just luck. It's just pure, pure luck. Based on the theme tonight, Jonathan, go on, give us your contributions. Have you got anything that you would recommend to a buddy, to a friend? What would you have uh, them pick up and sip and yeah. explore? The first bottle I ever bought, uh, which I had turned into a candle, so the King to Ruben. Nice, nice. Uh, now, I guarantee you know a lot of people have now tell us the abv 40 on oh no, it's 43 i think 46 it's 46 yeah. on keen to the ban yeah and i think i think keen to the ban is maybe the only one at 46 la santa nectar d'or and the standard 10 are all 43 and under depending on the market i think uh, the nectar d'or is 46 here is it Mm -hmm. i wonder see that's nicer and i, I keep talking about glenmorangie i think you know, they, they, they gave us the age bump as well from 12 to 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've never, during the times in the in the 19, through the, sorry, the early 2000s, in the last decade, when everybody was dropping their age statements, Glenmorangie stuck at it. They kept to their 10-year-old. Glenmorangie 10, it's been rock solid for a long, long time. We don't give them enough of a shout out from time to time. I think Glenmore still has the capability to bring it. Good shout. What else have you got? What else would you recommend? Um, I feel like most places that have the Glen Scotia 15, 
is a good deal. Um, and it's, Absolutely. it's hard to say that because, uh, for an example of Campbelltown, Springbank, is, I love Springbank. And of course, this is always... The Virgin Oak. Yeah. Nice. So you've got three completely different whiskeys there. You've got the real bourbon sweetness from the Virgin Oak. You've got the Campbelltown funk. There's going to be lots of meaty, full-bodied, savoury notes in that 15-year-old Glen Scotia to really give some contrast with the sweetness of the Virgin Oak. And then the port finishing, you can talk about concepts like casks and things when you share that Quinta Ruban with them as well. Nice little selection there, Jonathan, but you're a canny fellow. Um, tell us what you've got in the glass as well. You've got one of the brand newly branded Lady in the Glens. Lady of the yeah. Glens, haven't you? I was out of reach, I'm sorry. This is um, the Deanston 18, um, finished in the PX, uh, and it is liquid dessert. Very sweet from the PX then, because you mentioned it was an octave as finish as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting, Lady of the Glen, as you see, it's, that's the, the, the new branding as well. If you have a wee look on Malt Review, uh, we all like to have a wee read of Malt Review from time to time, completely independent review website. It's just uh, malt-review.com, I think. Malt, uh, they did a recent uh, write-up on a lot of releases from Lady on the Glen, like a vertical flight, um, quite interesting reading as well. Hmm. You can have a wee look at that. But you're enjoying that Deanston, aren't you? It is phenomenal. Okay, buddy, you ready for a wee game of Is It A Space Side? <laughs> I am. Let's do this. Do you have a bottle on hand or do you need me to have one on hand? I need you to have a bottle. Okay, fantastic. I get a wee break. I get a wee break. So it's up to you to try and snipe this time. I've got the only bottle, apart from this Klein Leash, so it won't be the Klein Leash, the only bottle that's on my desk is here. I'm going to try not to bring any shot. It's here, buddy. We have it. Um, it is a core range product. Uh, I'll bring up this uh, wee countdown and I'll wish you the best of luck, Jonathan. Um, right. I'm really thrilled, by the way, to, to welcome you in on a VPUB. I hoped that it could happen sometime. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. I'm going to try a different approach. Um, is the ABV a whole number or does it have a percentile like 43.4? Uh, so, or is it just a whole number? Wow. Or so, is it a whole number? I understand. That's a very good question. This ABV is a whole number. Ah. Yes. Is it an Isla? No. Is it a Highland? No. Is it a Space Side? Yes, it's a Space Side. Is it bottled at 43% or lower? No. Is it uh, 14 years or younger? Yes. Is it a Craig Elke? Wow, you're sniping now. No. Let's see, 46. I'm having trouble thinking. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. I know what happens. I know how this works. You're on a track and then there's a no comes along and you're thrown off. So so don't get too caught up on the ABV. You asked if it was 43 or less. I said no. Don't automatically assume that that means it's a 46. That'll help you out. Is it above 46? Yes. Uh, is it sherried style? Yes. I'm going to snipe here. Glenn Farkless 105. You beauty. You beauty. Well done. <laughs> well done. You've won yourself a sniper coin, buddy. And I can't have to say you've done it in style as well. So you knew exactly where to hone in on there as soon as you got the sherried style, as soon as we talked about high ABV presentation. Now I have to say this is dodgy and a wee bit ambiguous because most people talk about Glenn Farkless 105 as an on-age statement, it very often is, but it's often got an age statement on it. This one is actually a 10-year-old. It says 10-year-old on the back here. So this is an age stated one, but oftentimes it's not. Um, so it was tricky when you asked if it was a uh, 
I don't remember what you asked, but at 12 years and younger or something, I can't remember, 15, 14 years and younger, I had to say yes to that. Uh, but Glenn Farkless 105, you pulled it out the bag with a question or two to spare as well. Jonathan, well done. Thank you very, very much. You've got a wee sniper coin getting sent across to you. I might send you one for Zan as well. So you can have, I know that she partakes from time to time along with you. Um, are you able to are you able to stay for the quiz? Yes. Good man. I look forward to bringing you back in for a wee quiz a bit later on and uh, see how we got on there. Jonathan, well done. Well done. Thank you, Ryan. And, uh, thank you, my friend. I'll see you very, very soon. Amazing. Jonathan snatched victory from the jaws of defeat there. With three questions to go, he looked like he was all over the place. And suddenly he managed to pull his way back to shore. Fantastic. Multi-mission got that one according to Steve A. So Menno's got a coin coming to him as well. Fantastic. Well done. Alistair Gray is in. Good to see you, Alistair. Um, and Eric Way is saying, oh my God. Yeah, you're as surprised as me, Eric, right? He managed to pull it out the fire. Conor uh, Connoisseur. That looks like a brand new name, and he's saying Aquavita is there anything in Scotland with a full maturation in Virgin Oak except Ochentoshin and Glengarry. Full maturation in Virgin Oak, wow. Nope. Uh, I don't, the Deanston is not a full maturation. Uh, Tomatin Legacy is only partly Virgin Oak, only I think 30% or something. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I mean, it's not really, it's, it's a very recent thing for scotch. It's not really been a thing. Uh, scotch, because of the cooler climate, it's going to sit in a cask. Cask needs to be quiet. It's going to be there for a lot longer. You know, the style is a wee bit different. A lot of people, a lot of scotch lovers are often uh, put off a wee bit by uh, really, really, really strong, uh, rich, oaky flavours. Uh, I don't mind it. I quite enjoy it, but it's more of a kind of one dram event for me. It's not it's not something that, it's not Moorish. It's not something I want to go back and keep uh, pouring. Um, but it's a good question, and uh, it's nice to welcome you here. It's nice to have you ha have you in. Neil Averty is here. Good to have you, Neil. He's in four months of my journey, really enjoying Loch Lomond 12. Excellent. I have to say, Loch Lomond is, is a tremendous shout. Um, it's, uh, it's in there at good presentation. It's good value as well. We've talked a lot on the VPUBs recently about Loch Lomond, about how Loch Lomond Group in general, along with Glen Scotia, are really upping the ante and bringing really interesting products. I was thinking about including Loch Lomond, um, but uh, let's say it lost out to one of its stable mates, and I think we should start to talk about that now. Kevin Grant on Whiskey is asking if I've opened Seve's Klein Leash yet and tried it. No, I haven't. Actually, you might see it's in shot. How would I get out of the way? There you go. That's Seve's Klein Leash sitting there. Very tempted to open it. It looks an absolute peach, uh, but it's here for uh, the Whiskey Alchemist whenever he wants to drop by and pick it up. Yeah, she's saying, I believe Ben Romac Organic is fully matured in Virgin Oak casks. Um, that's a good shout, Yash. Fantastic. I didn't know that either. Orange Willis saying as well, he's backing that up, saying Ben Romac Organic. It's young whiskey, of course. Um, and Kilted Moose is saying <laughs> he's bullying me to open up Sebi's Klein Leash. <laughs> Aye, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Okay, let's get through the list. Let's share with, with what, what I can down. And obviously I was coming at this, you know, I'm looking at a beginner's palette. I'm looking to talk about concepts and give them range and flavours. But I also want to talk about the concept of regions and regionality because I know it's nonsense and lots of styles can come from just individual distilleries. Forget about regions. You know, it's, it's regions don't really mean a lot in terms of a guaranteed flavour style. Forget about it. But there are kind of classic template styles from regions. And that's a nice place to lean on. And when you're trying to learn 100, 150 distilleries when you come into Scotch, when you're trying to work out in your mental map where they all are and how they fit in the flavor landscape and the geographical landscape, regions help a lot there. It's these big buckets. And I know it's broad brush and generalization to talk about a typical or a classic Highlander or whatever it may be. When you think about the scale and the size of the Highlands and the shape of it, it's nonsense to think about a classic style, and yet there is a notional idea of a classic style, and it's a good anchor to play. So I did try and give my little list some thought of talking about the concept of regionality. 
But at the very first hurdle, I stumbled because there is not a lot of choice yet available from the lowlands. There's a, an explosion of new distilleries in the lowlands, but there was a time when all we could buy in terms of malt from the lowlands was an Ochentoshin, which quite frankly has been better in its time, and Glen Kinchy. I've gone off Glen, Glen Kinchy in the past, but recently came back to it. I think it's a really nice, uh, delicate, and yet it's something to do with the body of Glen Kinchy, the weight of it, that kind of texture, the oiliness, something about it. There's, You think it's really light and delicate, and then you sip it in contrast with something else, and it brings a lot. So don't discount Glen Kinchy 12. But 43%, it lost out to a bottle that was brought up by a visiting family, friends of ours, a couple of weeks ago for a wee barbecue out the back on a sunny day. And he sent me a text from the whiskey shop. He was on his way up, and he was bringing whiskey. And it's a bit like... Um, bringing coals to Newcastle, honestly, bringing whiskey here, but he, he's going to take it back with him. He's, it's a bottle for him, and he sent me a picture. Should I buy this one? And I said, yes. We tried it and shared it together, and I've since replaced or since, I've re since bought myself a bottle as well. So this is not a Lowlander, but it takes the slot in the Lowlander style, let's say. This is very light, very approachable, very easy, malty, creamy whiskey with great presentation and fantastic value. First Fill Whiskey uh, has bought me a, dra a dram in New Zealand dollars. It looks like he's saying studio looks great. Hope you had a good summer. Good to have you back. Good to have you back, Phil, as well. Uh, Phil's doing his own content. The, the quality of Phil's content is off the charts. He's clearly um, uh, got some background in video production of some description. Um, if you're interested, have a wee look at Phil down in New Zealand as well. And uh, Phil, I'll raise a wee glass and wish you all the very best with your content. And, uh, oh, I don't have anything in the glass. Phil, you'll have to bear with me while I get this Glen Cadham open and share this as my light entry in place of a Lowland whiskey. Now, my second list, my backup list, does have the Glen Kinchy included there. I put the Glen Kinchy 12 in because honestly, I think it's worthy. We glass with a glass topper ready to go. What a noise, I've missed this noise. Put a wee drop in. Now this would be a neck pour, of course, but it allows me to raise a wee glass and thanks to Phil. Slanch of Phil, cheers my friend. Mm. Lovely, light, creamy malt, lightly spiced, nice white pepper on the finish. And there's a reason for that because the, the, this is 10 year old age statement. So the A and the ABCDs are there. A for age statement, 10 years old. It's on the bottle. B, bottling strength, 46%. Well done, Glen Cadham. We love it. Fantastic. Um, C, for uh, chill filtration, it says on the bottle, Unchill filtered check. And finally, D for dye. Is there any color in this? And it says no added coloring. And they've actually written it here. This is four out of four on the ABCDs. And I paid 29 pounds. <laughs> There's nothing to talk about. This is the type of quality that you can bottle for this type of price. It's not costing Glen Cadham that much more or that much less than any other producer in the country to bring that presentation for a 10-year-old whiskey at £29.30. I, I guess the, the retail recommended retail for this might be as much as 35 or something, but I paid 29 for this. Um, and I think that's a remarkable whiskey for that kind of money. And you can taste it. This is very light. This is going to be subtle. This is going to hold the place of like a, a good example of refill ex bourbon style whiskey. It's going to be lighter. There's a bit more body to this than maybe a typical Lowlander. Maybe if you're talking about Lowlanders, you might want to talk about concepts from history like, like, like uh, triple distillation and things like that. It doesn't really do that, but it does give them a nice light refill bourbon end of the spectrum um, in ter terms of flavor and style to start a flight. The spiritiness is kept in check. There is a wee bit of spiritiness there, but it's light. So much about the texture on this. It's that creaminess. 
that light white pepper spice. Pastry, baked, malty cereal, lovely. Longer finish than you would imagine for a 10 year old. Medium finish, but just a nice, honest, as Ralphie would say, this is integrity whiskey. This is just straight up honest. Peter Hunt is here saying, Ian for Teeth from Glen Caddam has done some great virtual tastings over a lockdown. Convinced me to buy a few of their bottles. Ticks all the ABC too. I hope that their uh, sister uh, company, Tom and Till, follows as well and goes down that. If you want natural presentation from Tom and Till, you have to go um, up to their more premium products or the 14-year-old um, is a much more naturally presented product. Uh, but Tom and Tell's dealing with a legacy, a legacy range of whiskies there that would have normally been put out at 40%, basically selling to the same uh, consumers, the same customers as the as blends. So they would have had to be uh, budget whiskies as well, Tom and Tell. But Glen Caddam are coming at it uh, from a different angle, all natural presentation. You remember a couple of years ago, Ralphie voted the 15 year old uh, his whiskey of the year. And I think uh, they deserve to be paid a wee bit of respect and attention. And they're not shy to put the whiskies out even paler than this. This is a pale whiskey, but I've seen Glen Caddam 10 bottled looking paler than this and the 15 year old as well. As enthusiasts, we know not to pay any attention to that. We can enjoy a really, really dark whiskey, a heavy Coca-Cola coloured sherry cask, fantastic. But we can also enjoy a bright Chardonnay coloured art bag. We, we know that the colour doesn't determine the quality. Glenn Duncan is saying, have you tried Rassi? Well, we wait, quite enjoyed it. Yes, uh, Alistair Day on a, a VPUB, Glenn, was on. Uh, good to have you in, my friend. Good to have you here, Glenn. Yeah, uh, Alistair Day was on a VPUB quite recently, and uh, one of the whiskies that we shared was one of the Well We Wait. It's actually really quite nice uh, dram. I'm excited to see what they're doing up at Rassi, and Alistair's a great guy, as we know. Um, love to go and visit, actually. I'd love to go. Tom and Till are trying to bridge a gap, uh, but they are doing great says Luna Aaron. Um, aye, absolutely. And I've, uh, I think the Tom and Till is in the basket for the Recycled Review right now, the 14-year-old. Um, so I'll have more to share with you on that. Second in the lineup, um, obviously where you want to go after that kind of really light introduction with the, with, with the uh, Glen Caddam 10, you kind of want, want to sweeten up a wee bit and maybe go into the space sides and give them a nice example of maybe a typical space cider. But obviously, you've got a slot in that lineup as well where you want a kind of heavily sherry style. So that might be a space cider in there as well. And I, the one I'm going to share with you, I don't particularly love. It's not my favourite, favourite whiskey. I get on okay with it and I've got through at least a bottle of this before and I've replaced it, obviously, so I'm enjoying it enough. But I know that when I pour this for other people, they seem to really enjoy it. The Whiskey Rev swears by this whiskey. He thinks it's one of the best, most solid, most enjoyable 12-year-old whiskies that's out there in the market right now. And it's well presented at 12 years old. This is Glen Alecky's 12-year-old. Uh, uh, as we know, it's owned by Billy Walker now. Billy Walker was on the channel a few months back as well. It was very, very interesting to have him on. Um, and, and he was keen to point out that, that they're developing the 12 and they're making it better and better each time. Now, that's really encouraging because even from the get-go, Ralphie voted the Glen Allachy 12 his Whiskey of the Year one year a couple of years back. 46% age stated, and of course we know that Billy Walker doesn't want to colour or chill filter his products either. It's about 40 to 42 quid, so it bumped the prices up a wee bit. I was trying to keep it obviously down, um, but I decided to plump for this in the end. I thought it was nice, rich, sweet space cider in style, available everywhere and pretty rock solid on presentation. So I chose the Glen Glenallachie 12 next in my lineup. So let's imagine that we're taking somebody through this landscape. So we've gone out of this really nice light and we've started to introduce some really quite rich flavors in here. There's PX in here. Um, there's X, uh, first fill bourbon. Um, this is quite a rich, rich makeup as you'll remember when from when Billy Walker was on the channel, Glenallachie 12. Berkey 73 is in, just getting into Glen Goyne whiskies, fantastic whiskies as well. Loving the 10 and 18 year old trying the teapot dram this evening. Wow, completely different ballpark, completely different league. Teapot at nearly 60% ABV, super powerful, super rich. I've talked about teapot a lot on the VPUB, wonderful whiskey. But it's one of these whiskies that you would call an event whiskey. It's a, 
sit up and pay attention. And it's not just about that high ABV. It's about that boldness, that richness of flavour. It's really a burst and explosion of flavour. And it's really, really nice just to sit with a little dropper full of water and just drop water and it, drop water and it, sip by sip and bring it, bring it, bring it down and seeing how the layers change uh, as you go through the dram. Uh, it's great fun to do that with uh, any cast strength whiskey. Uh, good to have you in, Berkey. He's saying, ah, the Glen Allachy 12. Yeah, great choice. Whiskey Novice Jim is saying, John Della Cuisine is saying, another Ralphie Whiskey of the Year. I like it, but it didn't blow my socks off. It's just a bit sweet for me, slight, slightly on the sweet side, sickly side. Enjoyed a dram of it, would happily have it on the, in the cupboard and the shelf, and I would certainly get through it. Like I say, it's not just about me and my own personal preference. I, I, I'm struck by how, how much other people enjoy this whiskey. So when you're bringing people into whiskey, it's nice to give them bold things that they can actually taste. It's nice to give them hooks and contrasts that they can latch on to. And Glen Allachy brings that, the 12-year-old, especially on the back of the Glen Cadham. Uh, Zach is saying, I was not a fan of Glen Cadham 10 when I first opened it. Thought it needed to open up. Subtle whiskies always need a wee bit of time. As much for you as for them. I've grown to enjoy the style as a sourness from the malt that I needed to acclimate it to. Don't we find that with anything? You know, the new website's up if for anybody that wants to know. I knocked my socks off the last week or so um, finishing the website and getting it out there. That had lots of issues with it. Um, anyway, it's out there now. The new website's done. All I have to do is bring over some of the legacy blogs and content from the old site, and I'll do that um, in time. But one of the ones that I did bring over was that uh, everything in my life, all of my favourite things I once hated, and there's that wee article under about Aquavitae that exists from the original site. And it's exactly like that. You detect a flavour in something that's jarring at first. Maybe it's spicy sherry. Maybe it's heavily smoked peaty whiskies. Maybe it's, it's some kind of hook and it's jarring and you, you're not sure if you like it at first. But it becomes intriguing and then it becomes enjoyable and then it becomes addictive. Something, it becomes a, a style of whisky that you really love. Whiskey Novice is saying, absolutely no money wasted on marketing either. Um, uh, uh, marketing in the, in the Glen Allachy. Um, I, I think they've, they've paid a wee bit, the, the Flintstones branding and things like that. Um, uh, but I think it's fine. I think it's... I think they've done a good job of bringing a whiskey and a distillery to us. Because remember, this is not Billy Walker's whiskey. This is the, the legacy whiskey, the, what he's inherited, he's making and releasing from just now. So the whiskey that he's making now, I guarantee you, is going to be um, a huge step up, um, especially uh, for the enthusiast perspective. Glen Allachy was really, really under the radar. It was almost, you could say, neglected. Um, and he's been able to take this distillery and reinvent it. And that's the guy's a wizard at that. Look at what he did at uh, Glen Glass of Glendronach, especially. Ben Riak, especially. Um, wonderful whiskies. And everyone is saying he likes the Glen Alky 12px version a little better. The Whiskey Rev raves about the 10 year old cask strength as well. It's one of his favourites. Jean Della Cuisine is saying, love the website, just tested the store for you and it seemed to work wonderfully. Thank you, Jean. There is a store on there. Aquavita does have a store now. So instead of emailing me directly, I still have a problem with the Aquavita email. It's down for a wee bit. It should be back up tomorrow, fingers crossed. Hopefully, the, the emails are queuing there. So if you're waiting for an email from me, I had a horrendous nightmare with email. I found a folder um, in my uh, email server, my uh, domain provider, and there were so many non-spam emails stuck and lodged in there that I was missing that I wasn't getting to. So I need to uh, upgrade things a wee bit, and I'm in the middle of fixing that right now so that all the traffic gets through to me. If you're waiting on a reply from me and you haven't had it, I apologize. Uh, just be patient or resend, please, and I'll get it, and I will be able to reply to you. Um, anyway, the, the website is up and I do have a web store now there as well. So everything's on there and you can order it. You can also pay by PayPal, you can pay by card, you can pay by Apple Pay. So it's, everything's much slicker. The workflow for me is much easier as well. I get an order in. So in the mornings I can kind of pack things up uh, before I start anything else. And uh, hopefully things will be structured a lot better rather than me going in and um, trying to work out who wants who from where, who messaged me on... Um, 
messages, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, email, YouTube. You know, they, they were coming from everywhere, but now the workflow is concentrated. So it should be easier. Things are getting a wee bit more professional at uh, Aquavite headquarters. I hope you can see. Um, Lee is saying, unfortunately, Barflies uh, got to go. It's great to see so many of you here. You have been missed. Cheers, Roy. And it's nice to have you all back, night all. Lee good to have you in. Uh, I know that everything's getting back to normal and the kids are back at school. And so many of us are back at work as well. It's always a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Uh, Eric Cunliffe is saying, good evening. Happy to be back, to have you back. Uh, checking in between teaching yoga classes. Wonder if my advanced students will mind me thinking about whiskey through the whole class. Slant you. It's unbelievable that you're in or hosting, teaching a yoga class and you're able to chat to the barflies, Eric. You are a barfly, absolutely. Nice to have you, my friend. Say hello to the yoga students from us. Fantastic. So after, so then we've got the Glen Allachie, after the Glen Cadham. And we're going to go in a wee bit of a different dire direction here. We're going to try to concentrate on kind of bringing folk flavours and hooks that they can get their head around. So we have to go to Campbelltown at some point. And despite there being only three distilleries, we're actually remarkably spoilt for choice because we've got Coquerin 12, which is stellar for the money, less than £40, just a wonderful whiskey. My producer of the year last year, absolutely well deserved. I've since heard of a lot of problems with people. I had some difficulty myself getting a hold of a, a bottle of Coquerin 12. It's been alleviated a little bit. It's available now everywhere. The eight-year-olds, especially uh, this sherry cask edition that came out last year, was snapped up very quickly. But again, very, very good value whiskies. Easy to talk about. Springbank 10, if only it was a bit more available. Most It's, it's available most of the time. But again, like that recent Coquerin 12 issue, Springbank 10 can disappear, for us in the UK at least. You walk into the Good Spirits Company in Glasgow and sometimes they just uh, maybe don't have it. Um, so there is that, but that wee bit of an issue, um, and I'm not talking. That's not the good spirits coming. It's just generally sometimes you can check online and it's out as well. But again, Springbank Ten, wonderfully complex, wonderfully rich, ridiculously flavoursome for a ten-year-old whiskey, and again not expensive. But I chose for this lineup to switch it up a wee bit to turn my back on the ABCDs, and I'm only scoring two out of four on my own ABCDs for this one. But I think it's nice to talk about it. And that's Glen Scotia's double cask. It's a non-age statement um, from Campbelltown from Glen Scotia Distillery. But they do put it out there at 46%, which I think says a lot. If you taste the whiskey, you suddenly forgive it for its lack of an age statement. It's coloured as well. This whiskey is coloured. Um, but again, you forgive it because this is a really good whiskey at a really good price. There is a 40% Glen Scotia on each statement out there. I think it's called Campbellton Harbour or something that I have not tried. But all the other products from Glen Scotia are pay attention whiskies. I've got the Victoriana through there that I love. Very full on flavour. This is, this is that dialed down a wee bit. So imagine the kind of industrial, oily, savoury notes that we associate sometimes with Glen Scotia. This is dialed down a wee bit. This is a slightly sweeter easier to connect with Glen Scotia. But if you sip it in contrast with the two whiskies that we've been talking about, it'll stand out. And the hooks and the flavours, somebody smelling and tasting backwards and forwards between these three whiskies, this would stand out. I picked this up for less than £30. The standard uh, recommended retail for this, I think, is about the 35 mark, 37 something like that. But I got this on offer for less than £30, £29.90 or something like that. And I think that's really decent value for a decent whiskey. John Della Cuisine saying Aquavita, that was my first ever Campbelltown and it was like a liquid pecan pie. I loved it. Fantastic, uh, John. Uh, Daniel Gray is saying Glen Scotia Double Cask is a great whiskey. Couldn't agree with you more. Good, Daniel. I'm glad you're enjoying it too. Um, and Emery McGill is saying, yes, Double Cask is a funky one. Again, it's that Campbelltown style. I think it's, I think it's a wee bit dialed down. Um, it's there, but it's not so there. It's a wee bit like a Kilcairn 12. It's there, but it's not really in your face. Lynn Aaron is saying, how would you rate the sweetness level of the double cask? Uh, not as sweet as Glenallachie 12, but there is sweetness here. It is a sweeter style. Sweeter, richer, toffier, rounder style of Campbelltown. How it is here. Welcome back, Roy. Hope you had some time to relax 
uh, have to give that Glen Scotia a try. Hoyt, I've still got your flight of bourbons here from the It's Bourbon Night live stream. It's in a package down here. I've been meaning to contact you. I'll contact you directly and ask you if you if you want those flight of bourbons or if you'd prefer a shirt. Perhaps, perhaps I already did that. Let me know, Hoyt. Anyway, so that's just halfway through a flight already, and we're already in Campbelltown. But then we want we want to kind of switch it up a wee bit, and we want to just go on for. And this is a difficult thing to do, by the way, when you're looking at a budget to try and focus on sherry and sherry maturation. It's harder to find good value product out there. My second list pick for this was the Glenfarclas 15, and the Glenfarclas lineup. The 15 is great. It's at 46 percent. It's not the most consistent release, but forgive them for that because when you get a good Glenfarclas 15, it's very, very good. And you never have a Glenfarclas 15 and think, oh, I wish I'd not bought that. They're always good. When you get a, when you get a very good one, it is very, very good indeed in my experience. But that was my second, that's my B-list pick. I decided to take them down the sherry route with my whiskey of the year, and that's Glendronic 15. This is the premium whiskey in the pick. This is asking somebody that's coming into whiskey to spend £63 on a bottle of whiskey, which will make their toes curl. I know that that will happen. But then you get to talk about the concept of exclusive sherry maturation and the extra cost involved there. You get to talk about the fact that even at £63 against its peers, this is pretty good value. The Glen Farkless is good value, by the way, in the early 50s, 52, 53. It's about £10 cheaper than this. And then when they taste this, they cannot help but taste that completely different style of whiskey altogether. And just for conversation's sake, just to switch it up, just to talk about the richness, just to talk about, um, you know, flavours and, and sherry again, take them across to Buna Haven, give them a recommendation of the 12-year-old as well. I often forget how sherry this actually is. Maybe not as sherry as this. But when you sip them side by side, it's amazing <laughs> because sipping them individually, you're thinking, oh, sherry, and you start to talk about sherry flavours. And then you sip these two whiskies side by side. In isolation, they taste similar. And then side by side, they're wonderfully different. It's remarkable. And I think that if you can give that to people and let them taste side by side, it, it's really, really encouraging for them to step into whiskey more when they can taste differences. That's the big thing. People feel excluded by people putting their nose in a glass and tasting and rhyming off all of these aromas and tastes that you can pick out from whiskey. Um, perhaps not me, but but lots of folk in whiskey. That that can be intimidating because people have a wee sip and they, all they taste is whiskey. Maybe a nice whiskey. They, they might quite like it, but they certainly can't disseminate all of those different flavours. So encouraging them to do things like this, to compare two whiskies like this side by side, can be a really fun thing and encouraging for them because they can, they maybe can't isolate what the differences are. They can't put labels on the flavours yet, but they can see that there's a difference there. So that's position five and six for me, Glendronic 15 and Buna Havan 12. Let's wrap it up. We have to go to Isla. We really do. If we don't go to Isla, we have to find something that's peaty, that's typical um, of that style, that kind of heavily smoky, peaty style. And I thought this would be the tricky end, but it's remarkable how much choice there is out there that is good value. Paul Gibbs is saying, Aquavita, the web store seems to be working. Has everybody been nipping off to the web store? Listen, the patrons decimated it. The patrons got in before everybody else. I released it to them first, and uh, they, they ransacked the place. But, it, but there's lots of things in the web store that, uh, even if it runs out of stock, it'll come back in again. There's limited edition things in there, like the recycled T-shirt that'll never come back. Once that's gone, that's gone. That's limited. But there's kind of staple things like this. Uh, that, that, that I'll just restock, I'll just order more of if it's still in demand and it's popular. So please don't panic if you go there and you you uh, discover that your size or something that you wanted is out of stock. But what you will be able to find in the web store now yep. is this little bag of uh, glass toppers. Here they are here. They're sitting on my glasses just now waiting for me to, to pour drams into. Uh, they just sit on top. Like I say, they keep the dust out, uh, keep the bugs out, and they keep the smells in. 
I was trying to find uh, or etch the coins so that they would lock on the top of the glass. And what's happened is that depending on the Glen Cairns, sometimes they will lock a wee bit, but I decided not to do that. I've decided to invert it. You use the smooth end on the glass. You can hold it with your finger. You can wet it a little bit with a whiskey or whatever to help it stick a bit. But it's not intended to stick. It's not intended to be kind of portable. It's intended that it just holds the aromas in a wee bit there. Um, and what it also does is you look down on the glasses because it's six different designs. We've got a bar fly here. We've got a recycled coin. Um, we've got a not, it's whiskey till it's shared. It's not whiskey till it's shared roundel. We've got a VPUB compass. Um, we've got the Aquavitae banner logo there. And we've also got a whiskey evangelism roundel as well. So there's six different designs um, that should maybe help you kind of just, if you're sitting there at a tasting or a flight or whatever, um, distinguish between the drams. But I think I've been using these practically recently. And the, the thing that I really enjoyed out of them was, that, yes, it does keep the smells in the glass, mm -hmm. but that's less about the concentrating the smells for your first kind of nose when you take the lid off. It's But it's more about, the smells from each glass contaminates the other drams less. So if you've got really powerfully sherried or heavily peated drams, putting a wee cover on it seems to help a lot. Uh, it seems to uh, kind of keep your nose in a kind of more neutral state because it's not, the, the room isn't filling up with these really pungent, powerful aromas. Um, and I never thought about that beforehand, but that, that has surprised me. Anyway, cheers. I'm glad you're all enjoying the store. My goodness, it's already 11 o'clock. I want to hit the peated one quickly. Luna, I say now the glass top, toppers made of glass. Uh, not good for me and my clumsiness. The glass toppers are made of food safe acrylic. <clears throat> so these are CNC cut. They're quite, they're just machined out of a sheet of, of acrylic. Um, and then they're laser etched. Uh, so there's texture to the etching, but there's a polished smooth side on the other side um, and it's etched so that the the textured side faces up and the smooth side is on the glass and that way it could fit a copita it could fit a snifter a nose and glass or whatever glass that you're from only the very biggest tumblers that won't fit uh, they're, they're about um for i think they're 55 millimeters in diameter from memory so a wee bit bigger than the ceramic challenge coins but I really quite like them. I'm very happy with them. Um, they're they're twenty five pounds for a for a wee bag of six. Uh, patrons get there's an extra uh, coin in there for for patrons. Um, there's a sniper coin as well that you can obviously win uh, on the show. Uh, so so really there are eight designs out there, um, and I think it's just kind of good fun. They're not numbered or anything, so if you lose them, you can replace them. Whatever they're intended to be a practical thing. If they get scratched and chipped and scuffed and build up a wee bit of patina as you take them around to taste things then that's part of the fun if the bag gets grubby and grimy maybe next bag will be a darker color or something i don't know um uh, the feedback i've had from people that have got them in their hands and that are using them in a practical sense they seem to be quite happy with them um so i hope i hope you're interested i hope you like them uh, matt is saying already ordered the clear coins Roy they look awesome and you know how I am about my coins uh, Matt I think you may be one of the shipments I've already sent out my friend I hope you tell me what you think of them when they arrive what you're saying I use your coin at night to cover my dram because midges were drowning in my whiskey spit it out you wee bastard absolutely Hoyt um, if you're drinking whiskey outside in Scotland all the wee flies do jump in so it's very helpful for that as well and another tip when you go to bed at night and you've finished your dram, if you're like me, you do the lazy git. You just leave a cover on it. And then the next morning, come down. You don't do this and then sniff. No. Leave the top on, bring it right up. And it smells wonderful. It's dangerous to be smelling a glass of whiskey at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. But it's nice. You pick out a lot of flavours and smells um, that you might not have picked out when you were sipping a wet dram the night before in a dry glass, all the flavors are very much intact. And then you can get on with taking care of the washing. Anyway, yeah, David Owen is saying, I tend to use tops from presentation boxes for my glass. Lots of people have kind of, Dave did a video, 
precarious Dave, a link to it. Um, they only link it to patrons. If you search YouTube for Precarious Dave, he's a barfly. He's maybe in here tonight. Dave, you are in here tonight. No lazy, get essential bonus issue. Yes, in fact, your video, you talk about that very practice. Dave, if you want to drop the link for your video uh, where you review these um, in the chat, you're very welcome to do that, my friend. Um, but Dave decided to do a wee bit of an unboxing. He was one of the, uh, he got an advanced set because Dave was going to all the tastings with Pringle lids little clear plastic lids, which are quite big and flimsy. Um, I mean, they're, good, they're light and easy to carry, he says, and uh, he he was well known for using them. Um, and it was through dis discussion with Dave that I kind of helped form what I would like these to be. Um, so that's how we ended up with this. Anyway, let's say uh, share with you what I chose for, for my peated uh, for my smoky end of the spectrum. Even people that don't really like peated whiskey often end up loving it. And sometimes, oftentimes, I'm surprised that in the flight that I've given to somebody who's just getting into whiskey, it's the peaty one that grabs their attention. And it's the peaty one that hooks them. And it's the peaty one that makes them want to sip more. Lagavulin 16 has been so, so powerful for me for that very reason and it should be in this list but 43% in coloured I decided to give something else a push to the front for a change I eventually got my hands on a bottle of this and this could arguably be in here £40 wonderful presentation, big honest five year old uh, age statement on there, we love it but there's a huge but with this and I've been sipping from my friend Shiv, the wee beastie himself, he sent me a decent sample in advance. And I'll put it in this barfly glass. This wee beastie is exactly the type of whiskey that you want to cover um, so that it's not kind of filling, the aromas aren't filling the place. This is powerful, our big. Um, and I don't mean powerful and peat. There is a lot of peat there. There's quite strong peat there. But perhaps not as peaty as you might imagine. I mean, Ardbeg is just pretty peaty anyway. Probably the most peaty Ardbegs for me have been things like um, maybe Corivrecken um, and various expressions that they've had over the years. But the Ardbeg 10 is solid and peaty enough. Thank you very, very much. But the Ardbeg 10 is just a wee bit more crafted a wee bit more rounded, a wee bit more mature, a wee bit more mellow, as you would expect by double the age of this wee beastie. So this is spirit driven. This is powerful. This is good whiskey. But I think this is whiskey for an enthusiast rather than whiskey for a beginner. So I would choose, honestly, in my six lineup, our big 10. 43 quid, 10 year old whiskey, unchill filtered, natural color. £43 age statement. Wonderful stuff. Solid, solid, solid whiskey. And I, I think a wonderful example of Isla. Now you could swap out for a Lagavulin 16 and give something a wee bit richer, a wee bit, a wee bit kind of sweet, a sherry style flavour, richer, rounder, sweeter in the Lagavulin 16 than the more kind of uh, vibrant, grassy, brighter a uh, spun sugar candy floss sweetness of our bag. I think uh, you could have fun with them if they decided that they liked smoky whiskies. That's my six. If you need to go somewhere where they don't like smoky whiskies, I've switched out my Glen Cadam 10 with a Glen Alec, sorry, a Glen Kinchy 12, so it is actually a lowland whiskey. I've put in a Tobermory 12. I think it's too expensive, honestly, a Tobermory 12. It bumped me up over my £250 limit by about £7. Because of that Tobermory 12 at £45, I'd like to see that down at £38 in line with the Deanston 12 and um, and the Lechick 10 even, the 10-year-old Lechick, £38. Tobermory 12 at 45 is a bit pricey, but it's lovely, rich bourbon toffee caramel sweet. It's a completely different animal from the kind of greener, grassier Tobermory 10 that we used to have. I think that would be a good one to put in there. I would love to put in Deanston 12 to get them to talk about texture and whiskey, to get them to talk about complexity and spice. Deanston brings a lot of spice. And I've put Deanston 12 in my B pick. 
And of course, I've put Kleinleash 14 in that list as well. We often forget this. But by far, this was the most popular pick when I talked about this subject with patrons. Kleinleash 14 years old, 46% ABV. They don't talk about colour. They don't talk about gel filtration at Diageo. But remarkably affordable as well. 14-year-old whiskey at sub £50, £46, £48 of that order. And just dreamy, wonderful. Still one of the best distilleries in Scotland. I know that Klein Leash is becoming more and more expensive if you're finding single casks, mature single casks, but if you see it at an affordable price, just snatch it because uh, it's disappearing. Um, it's out of my price range now, quite honestly, uh, aged Klein Leash. Um, but the 14-year-old deserves to be in there. Kokerin 12. How can you have a, a lineup where you need to put in an example of Campbelltown and not have Coquerin 12 in there. Yes, it's an easy swap in and out with maybe something like a Glen Scotia or indeed the Springbank 12, sorry, Springbank 10. Springbank 12 I would avoid because of the really high ABV, the cast strength thing. Suddenly you're getting fiddly with water and talking to them about dilution and water concepts. And for a beginner, that's kind of a bit fussy. Try and keep the ABV down. So yeah, Springbank 10 or Coquerin 12. Um, and I've put in here, obviously, my Glen Farkless 15 for my sherry pick. For That's a list for peated, uh, sorry, for people that wanted to avoid smoke or peated whiskies. Um, and just a wee list of six. It's on that same spreadsheet. It's linked in the description box below if anybody wants to go and have a look. It's just a simple spreadsheet. And it's just um, asking patrons. There's almost 70 whiskies in that list from uh, things that people inside the Patreon community, my Patreon community, have been recommending. Um, some really uh, nice outliers there, some non-Scotches as well from Jim, Ing Jim Ingram and things like that. Lot 40 is a good Canadian example. Um, so very, very interesting. But what's telling is the top six. And the top six, if you add up the cost of the most popular whiskies for this concept, the top six most popular comes to less than £250. As does my six. My B list is a wee bit over. But I also did a budget list. And for £180, you can buy Tomatin, excuse me, <laughs> Tomatin Legacy, non age statement, but we talk about it often. More recent releases to my palate have been a wee bit more spirity than previous ones, but still fantastic value for Tomatin Legacy. Purely bourbon uh, matured as well. That's a nice starter. And then we've got um, Glen Murray. If you go for the Elgin Classic, again, non age statement, but a great budget whiskey. If you go for the Sherry Cask finish, you're getting your sherry fix from Glen Murray as well. Um, Old Pultney 12, always very, very affordable, always solid. Some people find Old Pultney 12 a wee bit boring, but spend a bit of time with it, sip it in contrast with other things to find where uh, the engagement comes. Old Pultney comes with the more premium releases, quite honestly, at 40% in a 12-year-old. It's a wee bit neutered, if I'm honest, but you can't really knock it at £25 a bottle in the UK and less, as it often is. Glen Grant 10. We often forget about Glen Grant. Yes, the 10-year-old is low ABV, but lovely, delicate, easy, sweet drinking whiskey. Glen going 12-year-old or Glen going 10 even. Um, Glen going 10-year-old, exclusively sherry cask as well. Young at 10 years old, but a lovely, elegant whiskey. And for that peated fix at the end, Something like a Scarabus is easy to pick up, non-age statement Scarabus. Um, Aina Lake Lindsay, 10-year-old Isla from Master of Malt, affordable. But my recommendation, I don't actually have it here. This is the 10-year-old here I have, um, is Port Escag. Um, the 8-year-old is available for £40 or less, and it's fantastic whiskey, fantastic ABV, fantastic presentation, Good. Now, we don't know what distillery it's from. Honestly, it's one of these things that's branded, but it's very, very representative of the style and often great. This 10-year-old is the 10th anniversary one, one of the best contemporary bottlings of Isla whiskey I've had, honestly. This is a precious, precious drop for me. This is my second bottle of this, and I had to pay a fortune to get hold of it. I tore through the first bottle thinking that I would be able to replace it, and that was a silly mistake. This is it's this 10 year old is wonderful, but the eight year old is absolutely solid. And for the same price, we can always have our well loved Kalila 12, which I'm really surprised didn't see a very, very popular showing in the Patreon list. How can we forget the solid, reliable 
Kalila 12 is like that friend that is always there, never lets you down. Just quiet. You could almost forget that they're there. And then when you really need them, bang, they're, in, they're there alongside you. That is Kalila 12. It's just, it's 43%. We get a bit annoyed about that. It's Diageo, we know. It would be wonderful if it was a bit higher ABV. It'd be wonderful if they would make it just a bit more natural. But if you're interested in that, Kalila is available from all the independent bottlers in all sorts of guises. And it's always solid and reliable. For £180, you're able to put together that we list as well. And the guy or girl that you're recommending or trying to bring into whiskey has got a very inexpensive little collection to really explore and get their head around different styles and flavours in Scotch whiskey. I wonder what you think of that. Thomas Elmer is here. Good to see you, Thomas. St. Port Askeg, um, or Port Askeg, if you want to pronounce it like an Elach. Um, he's saying uh, Port Askeg 110 is a great dram. Um, and I, I agree with you. It's great stuff. Speyburn. Speyburn. I played with Speyburn. I really did. And I think Speyburn is getting better. And it's one to watch. Speyburn, 10-year-old on the budget list. It would have been a very, very good shout. Uh, um, um, there's a good argument that it should have been included, actually. And like I say, uh, Speyburn seems to be doing quite well. It's one of these, again, another one of these really under the radar, not really heavily marketed by the owners. Um, uh, Inverhouse. And because of that, you can pick it up at a very, very good price. Chris Beaton is saying, uh, just off work, late to the party. Chris, don't worry, it's always here for you and you can pick anything up that you miss on the replay. Um, and and Whiskey Novice is saying Aquaviti. And of course, that's just Scotch. That's Jim giving me a wee nudge for not including any Irish in there, for not including any English. I actually thought about including Cotswolds, honestly. I can't include Bimber. I can't include fantastic, wonderful whiskies. I want to drink Bimber until the bottle's finished. I, I am loving it, really. But the prices that it's coming out at is kind of set in a kind of level that I'm uncomfortable with. I keep waiting on them to release one that's sub £50 to say this is going to be our staple core range. All these special releases that's coming out in smaller quantity, a wee bit higher, fine. But Cotswolds have proved that it can be done um, for sub £50, £40, that order. Very good whiskey. The other English producers need to do that. How, how long are we all going to be quite happy paying £65, £70 for three and four year old whiskey? It's nice to connect with these new distilleries. It's nice to support new distilleries. It's, they've got a lot of, of money to, to try to reclaim when they start to sell their whiskey and there's pent up demand for it when they start to sell it. But it has to be good. We let them have their special inaugural releases and their single casks and their exclusive releases, fine. But bring out a core whiskey that we can all connect with, that we can all rave about and recommend to each other. Things that we can share across borders. Um, core product that shows that you can put out there three, four year old whiskey profitably and reasonable volume, good quality for 40 45 pounds. Okay, maybe you could nudge me into paying 50 pounds. But 65, 70, 75, 80 and more for every release, it's too much. When I speak specifically about Bimber, it's bloody good. Look at look at my shelf here. There's three, four bottles, maybe more. But I'm starting to become precious with it and I'm sipping it little by little by little because it's it's expensive and difficult to get a hold of. Whereas if it was easy to replace, I would I would be sharing it willy-nilly and I'd be drinking it happily myself. Um, it's something that I think we all have to be aware of. Anyway, how's the time? 20 past 11. We should really be getting the quiz on the go. Is there any housekeeping left to do? I've talked about the website and the email. I've talked about the online store. Uh, the only thing left um, to talk about really is the Zoom speakeasy on Sunday night. I'm going to try and bring that on Sunday night um, for all patrons. Uh, but I'll... Um, bring more details and say Patreon for that to all my patrons, but it's definitely going ahead, fingers crossed. And uh, then I've got uh, the Whiskey Tribe. The Bastards Ball cannot go ahead this year for obvious reasons, so they're doing it virtually as well, and they've invited me along to host a pub quiz, an Aquavitae style pub quiz that's going to involve a lot of other YouTube channels that would have otherwise been able to congregate and get together. So in order to replace that, um, they've suggested that they might like um, to invite me on to host um, a pub quiz. <laughs> and of course, that would be wonderful for me to do that. So I'm excited to, to be part of the Bastards Ball in whatever form or shape it takes. And that's going out on the 12th of September as well. 
Let's ask Jonathan and uh, Sachin if they are both okay to come in and join and participate with the quiz. You okay, guys? Oh, yes, they are. Thank you so much to both of you for hanging out um, and listening to me monologue for a while. Did I surprise you with any of the picks or were they all quite... Um, uh, could you could you have predicted them? The, the, yeah, I mean, they're pretty good bottles. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew, you know, they're not surprising, let's put it that way. They're not surprising. Okay. I mean, it does, once we start to get together as a community, we do tend to talk about the same bottles over and over. So with the Glen Scotia Double Cask, with the Glen Cadam 10, the Port Askig in there, I, what I was trying to do is to bring in some other good value, decent, honest whiskies that people could engage with that perhaps they haven't been already. Uh, Jamie Brown is saying, I love Bimber. To be fair, they have much smaller stills than Cotswolds, but I agree on the limited releases, I. Um, and it, it, it's, capacity's got so much to do with it, I understand completely, and not all business models are the same. Uh, but if you're coming to enthusiasts, uh, their money pool is, is finite. Um, and, uh, and, and I guess, I suppose, if you get something you like, you might just keep going back and buying that. But I am much more fickle than that. I like to go all over the place and explore everything. What about you, Jonathan? Did you have any uh, thoughts on the picks? What did you think about the budget picks? I think they're fantastic. Um, here in Alabama, the only really budget one is a Spayburn 10. Um, I've had one Spayburn and wasn't a fan. Um, I think overall, fantastic picks. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, if, and again, what we're trying to do is give people contrasts, give people the ability to have a wee selection that hasn't cost the earth that they can share about. Jimmy Legg, you star Blair, he said, Mr. Duff, I can't tell you how happy I am to have you back. Jimmy, I can't tell you how happy I am to be back when I've got folk like you in the community, my friend. Thank you so much for your dram. I'm going to take the lid off this wee beastie um, and raise a glass. I know you're a fan of Ardbeg, Jimmy, so slant your to you. Have you tried the wee beastie, guys? I haven't, no. No. Nope. I haven't got my hand on it, no, hands on it yet. But I, I see Amazon have it, because there was a time where it totally disappeared. Yes. Uh, I, I see it's come back, so yeah, I'll probably order one, actually. I mean, I think they've had challenges recently getting it uh, through the supply chain, uh, especially in the UK, it would seem. But it's here now, we can buy it now. It's popping up here and there again. Like I say, £40. It's five-year-old whiskey. I think £40 is probably the top end. Uh, but certainly a fair price, let's say. <clears throat> I would, uh, hopefully you might see it on offer coming down five or so pounds because it's cruising quite close to the 10-year-old right at 43. But the 10-year-old is, is their core release. That's the, the, the high-volume product for them. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how it does on pricing. To be honest with you, I want to keep supporting any producer that comes out and puts an age statement on there, even when it's as young as five years old. I think it's remarkably confident. Alistair Grace bought me a dram as well to say, and I'm ho so happy to have Jimmy Leg back. <laughs> Absolutely, Alistair. Let's raise a wee glass, glass to that and say, everybody get ready for the quiz. Cheers, Alistair. Bang. So there's there's what, what I've done there is, wow. So the, the and some people think that in lineup, a peated whiskey is always going to be at the end, obviously, because it's the most bold, powerful flavors, all that heavy smoke. But you can go back to something as light as this. And and on the back of that, that wee beastie, that super strong, powerful peaty whiskey, and pick up so much sweet, creamy flavors that you perhaps didn't get beforehand just by the, that sipping in contrast. Mm. Um, that's quite amazing. So with, with the spice and the power and the spiritiness um, of the wee beastie just seem to bring out so much clean, elegant sweetness um, in the uh, Glen Cadam 10. Quite amazing. Quite amazing. Wonderful stuff. Are you ready for the quiz? I want to defend myself real quick. I could only think of four whiskeys that were 46 or above in Speyside 14 years or younger. I think most things are 15 years, like for the Glen Farkless, Glen Lemori is 18. So I had it down. So 
You you killed it. You killed it. One. The, do the doc has a way of doing this. All he wants to do is find questions that will bring the possibilities and cut them in half. Mm -hmm. Whatever's left, cut it in half. Cut it in half. And then you whittle it down. That's this kind of the way that the doc tries to guide people. And I think once you, once you started to talk about the ABV thing, because you were down to three questions and you were lost. Well, I had um, it to me. So 105, Glen Alp 12, um, then Roma Cash Strength, or yeah. uh, the Tome and Toe 14. So those are the only ones that, that prove younger age. But you won. Yeah. So the coin, the coin's coming to you. You can be, you are a sniper. You're, you've, you're officially a sniper. Well done. Okay, let's see how you do on the quiz, my friend. <laughs> Normally, I say it is an easy one tonight, uh, but honestly, I'm not so sure. Let's bring it in and see how we got on. For anybody that's new at the VPUB tonight, still a lot of you in. Thanks for hanging around till near the end. Uh, the quiz is always at the end so that it makes it optional for everybody. And it's multiple choice as well. So, you know, there's a chance that uh, you can use some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, intelligent guesswork to try and get to the answers. Uh, you're only keeping your own score. You're only playing against yourself. You can share your score in the lounge if you if you would like to. Good luck, everybody. Ten questions. Going to try and get through it in the next 15 minutes or so. Let's see how we go on. Good luck, uh, Sachin. Good luck, Jonathan. Thank you. Question one, our beg has previously had a Beast-themed release called Arinam Besht. Meaning what? What did Arinam Besht mean? Was it A, Shelter of the Beast, B, Roar of the Beast, or C, Power of the Beast? No Googling, please. Just try and give it your best. Most people probably know this, but I'm going to ask which of those, Shelter, Roar, or Power of the Beast. Clearly we're talking about a beast of some description. As an aside, can either of you think of another beast-themed name in whiskey? Yep. Go ahead, Jonathan. Pete's Beast. Who? Uh, Pete's Beast. The independent bottling. Oh, really? Pete's Beast? Mm -hmm. Wow, I've never heard of that one. I was thinking about an independent bottler, though. I was thinking about uh, Douglas Lane's Timorous Beastie, the Highland. Remarkable regional mall, Timorous B State as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Everybody's all over the place with this one. There's a lot of guesswork going on. Um, lots of people seem to think it's B for Roar of the Beast, but in fact, I can tell you all that Ari Nambesht means place or shelter of the beast. What would you have guessed? B. No. Oh, B, you were going for Roar as well. Yeah, Ari Nambesht is... Um, it's actually, a, I think it's also um, a water source, it's going from memory. Now, I'm just winging it here. I'm going from the hip. I should have checked that out. But, yeah, it's actually a place, and it's the place or the shelter of the beast. Question two. In modern times, most scotch is made from barley malted and drum maltings, these huge, big cylindrical things that I would love to go and see in the flesh. But how much would a drum typically hold? How big are these drums and drum maltings? Would they hold about 10 to 30 tons of barley? Would they hold about 50 to 80 tons of barley? Or would they hold 100 to 300 tons of barley? I'm waiting for Jimmy Legg to tell me this is an asshat question. I'll tell him just to pause. I've saved an even bigger asshat question for a bit later in the quiz. But how big? I mean, you can see why I've put this question in there. You know, in floor maltings, you can see the scale of it. There's obviously tons of barley raked out on the floor. And one of the alternatives to that is obviously these industrial um, scale sized uh, drum maltings. But how big are they? Do they uh, 10, 50, 100 plus tons? What would you say? What would you guess, Jonathan, if you don't know? I'm usually the person that goes in the middle. So B. <laughs> and Sachin? That's exactly my, my, my technique for that one. Yes. The reason I put this question in here tonight, I was shocked to hear that these drum maltings are 100 to 300 tons. Wow. So this is how far down the whiskey rabbit hole I am. I am now super excited to go and visit an industrial maltings just to see this spectacle of 100 plus tons of barley being malted at the same time in a drum. Quite incredible. 
Mm. We drink a lot of whiskey. There has to be a way to do it at scale, right? Yeah. If you have a seat, give yourself a point. Question three, Stork Club Whiskey. There's a range of whiskeys from a distillery located where? Stork Club Whiskey. Is it from Germany, Finland, or Russia? A for Germany, B for Finland, or C for Russia? Have either of you heard of Stork Club Whiskey? No. I had only heard of it vaguely, but I recently got sent a wee sample of it from... Uh, I want to guess it was Stefan Novak, actually, that sent me it, along with some uh, wonderful uh, American rye whiskies um, and some other things. But I had that quite recently and uh, enjoyed it very much. But I'm asking you where it's from. Whiskey Jason is keeping me... Good to see you. In, uh, Jason, good to have you, my friend. He's putting wee lines in of definition. Um, I can see where the chat is leaning, but I'm going to ask Sachin, what would you say? My guess would be Finland. And Jonathan, what do you think? I'm going with the Germans. Okay. I have to say, I don't know if you're following the chat there, but you're absolutely spot on. It is in Germany. Um, and the book that I've got is called uh, Spearwood, but I think the distillery is actually called Spearwald. Um, so Stock Whiskey is the brand coming from Spearwald, which is... Apparently, they make malt whiskey and other things, but it was the first rye distillery in Germany as well. I have to say the one I tried was rye, and it was uh, very, very tasty. Question four. This year, Compass Box celebrates making whiskey for 20 years. That's quite amazing to me that they've been around for 20 years. But which release launched their brand back in 2000? Was it A, their hedonism, which was a blended grain? Was it B, their spice tree, which is blended malt? Or was it C, Great King Street, which is their blended range? Whiskey Jason is saying Spreewood. He's keeping me right. Spreewood. Ah, did I say Spreewood? Spreenwald. Ah, Spreewood. There you go. It is indeed German. Do you know what launched Compass Box, guys, back in 2000? No, I'm guessing it's not B. But uh, no, I, I'm going to guess it's probably, let's say, C. That's what I'm going with. If you're going with C, I'm going to go for the, the higher end product and go with A. What the okay. difference? You are a sniper, Jonathan, and you're sniping it tonight. <laughs> It was indeed hedonism, the blended grain that launched a compass box, or that's what they say launched the brand in 2000. Um, it's still available today. It's a wee bit pricey, if I'm honest, but as soon as you drink it, there's no argue to be had, argument to be had. It's really, really nice. Um, there's one of my very, very early videos, hedonism was in the lineup, and it won the blind flight that night. It's a good, good whiskey. Uh, but there you go, 20, year, 20 years old this year. Jimmy Legg was also guessing B, uh, but he, he admitted he wasn't confident. Picture question here now. Obviously, I'm just going to ask you a straight obvious one. Uh, you can just nod or shake your head if you know what distillery we're looking at, boys. Don't give it away quite yet. Uh, there's a bit of a clue. We're, we seem to be on the coast there. That looks like the sea in the background, although it's a bit blown out. I'm going to give you three distilleries and ask, are we looking at Balblair, Glenmorangie, or are we looking at Old Pulteney? Which Highland distillery are we looking at here on the coast? A, Balblair, B, Glenmorangie, or C, Old Pulteney? Eric Waite, Whiskey Studies, saying he didn't really appreciate hedonism until he tried other grain whiskies. Um, there are some cracking grain whiskies out there. For me, it's a mood thing. Um, I still prefer malt over grain. <laughs> Honestly, even mature grain, but there's some great value bargains to be had. Hedonism is a very well put together product. It stands up very well against malt, quite honestly. You guys would have to guess this, right? Give us a guess, Sachin, give us a guess. Uh, Old Pulteney, C. I'll do the same, C. Okay, you will think it's Old Pulteney. Sure, I've yeah. been, I have been here and I looked at these uh, pictures and the only thing that threw me, I didn't remember the red paint, but I, I recognised the little walkway courtyard. I recognised its location immediately. I did pick this one out. Uh, Jimmy Legg, his, you know, 
Jimmy, that's the thing about the questions. Jimmy Legg is saying Old Pulteney is not a distillery. Pulteney is the distillery. Uh, Al Blair is not on the coast, which leaves us with the Glen Morden G. Unlucky boys. So we are looking at a, where they house the giraffes. Question six. Bimber in London have a still on site named what? A. Stormbreaker. B. Caractacus Potts. Or C. Doris. <laughs> Bimber have affectionately named one of their stills. A. Stormbreaker. B. Caractacus Potts. Or C. Doris. Eric Wetstein, I've been to all three of those distilleries, but the angle of the photo is throwing me off. I know you didn't fly into them, Eric, I'm sure. You're guessing again, it's a hard one tonight, isn't it, boys? Mm -hmm. What did I say to you before we went live tonight? It's going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, I tell people that it's an easy quiz. Yeah. But I had a, 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 a bit of an instinct that it was going to be a challenger tonight. The chat seemed to be leaning towards C for Doris. Are you going to go uh, A, Stormbreaker, or B, Cracticus Pots, or are you going to go with the chat for Doris? I was going to go with C, yeah. Yeah. It is indeed Doris, apparently a reference to Greek mythology. Um, Astraea, I think, is how you pronounce the other still, which is also from Greek mythology. Stormbreaker is obviously a Marvel reference. Caractacus Potts is a wee reference to Precarious Dave's video where he reviewed uh, the glass toppers. Uh, he had some Caractacus Potts inventions, so stay to the end of his video for a bit of a chuckle and a laugh to see how uh, Precarious Dave is pimping his drams. Question seven. Sovereign is an ex-bourbon matured what? A, a non-age statement from Tullibardin. B, an English-Scottish blend from the Lakes Distillery. Or C, a Scotch blend from Ian McLeod. What is Sovereign? Now, Sovereign can be a lot of things, especially in branding. But out of the choices that we have there, is it a non-age statement malt from Tullibardin? Is it an English-Scottish blend from the Lakes? Or is it a Scotch blend from Ian McLeod? Oh dear, the scores are poor. I was right, it's a tough quiz tonight. The scores are a wee bit poor tonight. I think I'm going to lose some fans. Some people won't be turning up next week. They'll be in a huff. <laughs> They're shouting at me right now. Come on, give us a guess, Jonathan. I'm going with C. Scotch blend from Ian McLeod and Sachin. What would you I think? I was thinking the same thing. Core range product from oh, Tullibardin. Their entry level product is called Sovereign Tullibardin. I put this in here because Tullibardin is, seems to be one of those malts that still flies under the radar for us, often with merit, but they are capable of doing some really cracking things. I'm not suggesting that Sovereign is one of them, but their entry level is called Sovereign. Question eight, Turmor, rarely seen as a malt whiskey, is nevertheless a fairly large distillery, but what is its capacity? Jimmy Leg, strap yourself in. Here is your asshat question. What is Turmor's capacity? Is it A, exactly the same as Can Envy? B, twice as much as Balvenie, or C, 10% of Glenfiddich. <laughs> I'm grateful that you're laughing, Jonathan. <laughs> so we've got the three Grants distilleries there and comparing them to Pernod Ricard's Turmore. We've got Caninvi, Balvenie, Glenfiddich. Is Turmore the same as Caninvi? Is it twice as big as Balvenie, or is it about 10% of Glenfiddich? Give me a guess, Jonathan. Well, it's difficult because as a scientist, you are not being consistent with your units. <laughs> Percentages. You Would know. it therefore qualify as being an asset question? <laughs> I'm going to go with twice as much as Balvenie. And Sachin, my um, friend. I was thinking it's uh, exactly the same, exactly the same, same as Kaninvi. That's my guess. 
Well, I can tell you along with Stewie Baby, Stewie Baby, I've got a package here for you. I need an address from you, please. Uh, sit, I would say send an email to whiskey at aquavita.com, um, but maybe wait for the next 24 hours for me to fix my email. Um, I need your, your address to send you your package, my friend. Along with Stewie Baby, uh, Erwin uh, Laranaga, good to see you, Erwin. Along with, uh, I'm looking for anybody else that's got this one as well, but certainly my friend Sachin down in Kent has got it right. He's sniped it uh, as 4,000. Sorry, 4,800,000 um, litres. So, yes, the same size as Canenvy. We often think of Canenvy as being a really tiny distillery based on the releases we see from it, but it's actually scaled pretty big. Bulvenie is huge, 9 million litres. And we don't know what size Glenfiddich is. Honestly, the last figures we have, 13 to 14 million, with a view to expanding to 20 plus. Uh, but they're having delays with the expansion at their end. Question nine, according to Forbes and Drizzly in 2020, this year, the best-selling bourbon in America is currently what? Now this, I cannot vouch for this being accurate, but this is according to Forbes and Drizzly uh, this year. This is an article. Is it A, Bullet, B, Maker's Mark, or C, Woodford Reserve? The reason this question is in here is, look, there is no Jim Beam, there is no Jack Daniels. Um, mm -hmm. No fireball. <laughs> Quite surprised by this, but according to Forbes and Drizzly, one of these is the best selling in 2020. A, Bullet from Diageo. B, Maker's Mark. C, Woodford Reserve. Luna Aaron is saying, what? She's the same reaction as me. I see these things and I decide that would make a good pub question. Would you be guessing this? Jonathan, you're in the States. Would you have to guess here? Um, my father-in-law loves Bullet, so I'm going to say Bullet. Sachin, would you agree with Jonathan? I like Bullet as well, but I would say it's C. Woodford. So you had Woodford in your hand earlier. I did. We both enjoy Woodford. I don't mind a wee glass of Bullet. I enjoy Bullet Rye even. And I know there's millions of people out there telling me how much better Rye can be. But Bullet Rye was what got me into Rye. But Bullet Bourbon, apparently, is the best-selling in the states well done jonathan uh, number two by the way this will shock you is maker's mark and number three is woodford reserve oh there you go where is jack daniels where is jim beam what is happening in america it's amazing maybe, jack maybe jd's amazing. Not, not a bourbon <laughs> maybe Sorry? maybe jd's not a bourbon no yeah. it's, it's classed as a bourbon well yeah, i know about it being tennessee whiskey i know about the the um the filtration and everything but the class is a, is a bourbon and it's not it's uh, it's been outsold currently in the states in its domestic market it's been outsold by all three of those brands like i say you would have to refer to that article on forbes and drizzly it's the only source i've got for it but i found it interesting so if you answer a give yourself a point and it, i didn't put jim beam or jack daniels in there so we're really asking the question the best seller out of those three in terms of scoring for the quiz 10 Last question. The Whiskey Novice used a comic intro to highlight the availability issue with which distillery? I've talked about Jim's intros. I've talked about his videos. Uh, I think his videos are funny. When I see the notification pop up, always drop in and watch it because it's, he's always got something original and interesting to start off his reviews. It really makes uh, brings a wee extra dimension. But he was making a point about the availability of A, Springbank, B, Kilcarran, or C, Daft Mill. He was reviewing this whiskey and he started his intro using a nostalgic ad in the UK, a Yellow Pages ad, um, where a man was searching and searching and searching for something um, and eventually found it. Very funny. I recommend that you look at Whiskey Novice channel, uh, give him a sub and give that video a watch. Mm. You'll find out what the video is in a minute. Maybe you don't watch the Whiskey Novice, Sachin. I haven't seen it, no. Connect with Jim, he's a good lad. I'm, John, I'm, I'm going to definitely look at it, yeah. I, I've seen some of them. I have not seen this one. Guess. I would say C. Based off availability, I mean, it seems too easy, but C. <laughs> I but did talk about it earlier in the chat tonight. Um, it is too easy to talk about C. To complain about the availability of Daft Mill is a bit like to, <laughs> you know, it's just uh, 45,000 litres a year or something. It's just... But this was talking about Kilcarran and the fact that Kilcarran 12 just dried up. 
we couldn't buy it for uh, quite a while there. It was really, really tough. It's popped up again, very grateful to say. So if you answered B for Kilkerran, yeah, that was at Whiskey Novice is saying, I'm not saying he's having a laugh. That was a free question for him. So I don't know, boys, if you've been keeping your scores there. You don't have to admit it, because I appreciate it would have been tough to even scrape a pass mark tonight. The pass mark for the for the quiz at the end is usually five out of ten. This was a toughie tonight. It was quite tricky questions. I don't know why. Maybe just the mood I was in when I made it. I don't know. Uh, are you willing to admit? Four out of ten. Nearly. Sachin? I'll, I'll admit I got a shameful two out of ten. Yeah, I'd, I'd listen. Don't. There's no shame. There is no shame to be ashamed of. It's It was brutally difficult. If I had saw those, if I had seen those questions, you know, before I, I, I'd researched them, discovered them, tripped on the facts that generated those questions, I don't think I would have got a pass mark tonight. Honestly, I think it was a tough quiz. Uh, Graham Fraser is saying a six out of ten, good for tonight's quiz. He's got an empty upturned glass. Uh, Andrew is saying awful. Edwin Engber's got eight out of ten. That's a tremendous score, fantastic. Des is saying five out of ten with a pass, fantastic. Um, and Whiskey Novel is saying cheers, mate. That brought me four to ten with his free one. So, yeah, I think it's been a tough one tonight. Donald Rance is saying two out of ten, really buggered this one. I think there were a few banana skins in there as well as a couple of ass hat and hard questions. Listen, I'm going to raise the very last of my Glen Cad Glenn Cadam, I think. Oh my goodness, no, that's the that's the wee beastie. <laughs> it's the barfly on the top as well. I should have known that. I should have known before I brought it up. Um, I'm going to raise this glass to you both and say Sachin and Jonathan, an absolute pleasure to have you joining us um, from each side of the Atlantic for a wee game tonight. You both deserve a whiskey sniper coin, and I'll get them along to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for staying to the end. Until the next time. Thank you, boys. Wonderful stuff. Going to wrap this up right about the two-hour mark. Going to just slip over by a minute or two. I always do. I don't seem to be keeping things succinct after the summer break. Just the same as before. Completely different scene tonight. Before we finished for the summer break, I was literally out in my driveway, which is still a very surreal thing for me to look back on, but it, it happened. Looking forward to taking the VPUB forward weekly with you. I'll see you a week from tonight. Um, I'll be back. I think I know what I'm going to be doing next week, uh, but I'm going to develop it a wee bit further and share it with you in the coming days. Uh, stay tuned. If you're subscribed to the channel, click the bell and you'll get the notifications and things when they come up. Uh, and I look forward to welcoming you back here next week. My email should be up and on in the next day, but if you're waiting on a reply from me, just be a wee patient, be a bit patient. Um, I should be able to access them very, very soon. I apologize for my technical ineptitude when I was setting up the website. I screwed up the domain side of things. Thank you all for all your support, for all your super chats. Thank you for attending uh, tonight. Thank you for hanging out with me, so many of you. Again, thanks to all my moderators, to Alistair, to Steve, to Whiskey Jason, to Gregor McQuee, uh, to Doc McAllen Fine and Rare, to everybody for helping out. Thanks to Sachin and Kent and Jonathan over in Alabama for taking part. Is it a space side? If you want to take part in it, is it a space side? Get in touch with me and I'll add you to the queue and I'll reach out to you when I'm setting it up. It'll be a pleasure to welcome you on the VPUB. In the meantime, I'll raise what's left of my Glen Cadam now, I think. And I'll say thank you so much for joining me on another VPUB. And I look forward to welcoming you back a week from now. Thank you, whiskey folk. Slanchiva. Mm -hmm.